Today we're going to be having a look at my Panasonic Lumix 100-300mm Mark 1 lens that I only paid £160 for. This is a very interesting lens because I believe it's one of the best and cheapest ways to get into bird photography. I'm going to go over my experiences with this lens, the pros, the cons and, and would I recommend you picking up one of these lenses as a first time bird photographer. So as always if you do enjoy this video be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 500 subscribers and it would be amazing if we could hit that goal. Anyways getting on with the video. So this lens was released back in 2010 for the Micro Four Thirds platform and in the world of very expensive zoom lenses it was actually a budget orientated lens. So just an overview of the lens, it's all plastic construction, it has rubber on the zoom and focus rings, it's also got a switch for OIS, so it's got optical image stabilisation built in which is very nice. Zoom in the focal length it does actually extend the lens quite a bit and then it has a manual focus ring at the end. This is actually a focus by wire mechanism. And overall it is quite a weighty lens. I think it weighs just over half a kilogram. So why is this so good for bird photography? So you may be thinking that 100 to 300 millimeters doesn't actually zoom in that much. That probably isn't enough for bird photography. But for some of you that don't know the advantages of shooting with a micro four thirds camera, because the sensor is significantly smaller than that of a full frame camera, there is actually quite a large crop factor. So that actually in real terms turns this 100 to 300 millimeter lens into a, into a 200 to 600 millimeter lens. So this actually, when it's fully zoomed in is a 600 millimeter lens. So just one thing to note, because this is the Mark I lens, Panasonic did release a Mark II a few years later that is gonna be more expensive. So I use this lens with a Panasonic G80, which has in-body stabilization. And this lens does not work with that. So when you use stabilization with this lens, it'll automatically shut off the in-body stabilization in the camera, which isn't the end of the world because the stabilization on this is actually okay. But just to note some more modern lenses use a combination of the optical and the in-body. They're able to communicate together. And I'll just pop up some handheld footage with this lens. So this is so this is fully zoomed in at 300 millimeters, handheld using the optical image stabilization and and even handheld this is quite a smooth lens. You are able to use it handheld, fully zoomed in and it the footage is usable. One more thing to note about this lens is the aperture does vary depending on the focal length. So when this is at 100 millimeters, so fully zoomed out, you will be able to open the aperture up to f4. But when it's fully zoomed in at 300 millimeters, it will be limited to f5.6. This is okay for outdoor shooting when there's a lot of sunlight. I haven't really had a problem. One thing to note with a zoom lens, you do actually have to crank the shutter speed up quite high um, compared with a wider angle lens just to reduce that motion blur. So in low light situations, you can find that you have to bump up the ISO quite a lot, but outdoors I've been able to shoot at ISO 400, 800. So I finally just wanna have a quick chat about the image quality produced by this lens, and it is actually very good. Um, they look sharp and the image stabilization really does help. I'll obviously be putting some of these images up on screen uh, so you can have a look yourself, but yeah, they do look very professional. This lens is fairly easy to use and they do look a lot better than my previous cheap lens solution, which was this 40 quid vintage lens with a lens adapter. So this has no electronic connection to the camera. This lens looks far worse than this lens. So if you are looking for a cheap zoom lens solution, getting a vintage lens with a lens adapter works, but it does look significantly worse. Autofocus on this lens has been relatively good actually. For taking photos, it's, it isn't super quick or snappy like some of the really expensive lenses. So if you are trying to shoot moving birds or a moving subject, then it will struggle. But if your subject is relatively stationary, it shouldn't struggle to find focus within a second or two. I think part of the focusing is down to the camera that I'm using. I'm using a Panasonic G80, which this camera uses a contrast based focusing system, which isn't quite as quick as some of the newer Sony's or Canon cameras. So just some quick quirks with this lens. So obviously I paid £160 for it, which is much less than it usually goes for. So there were some compromises. Even though it was listed as fully working, I have had some issues with this lens. The first one being that sometimes when I connect it to the camera, it's like these contacts don't connect properly. So sometimes the autofocus doesn't work. And when that happens, I have to disconnect this lens from the camera turn my camera off and then reconnect the lens and make sure it's quite firmly connected and then it should work when I power the camera back on. Um, but I've noticed this maybe 
uh, every one in four times I connect this lens to the camera it has that connection issue. So if anyone has any ideas why that happens or whether this lens just needs a software update to fix that, I'm not sure. So if you've got any suggestions why this might be, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Another little quirk with this lens is the focus ring. I don't know if it's just an issue with my lens, but this focus ring feels very stiff and gritty. It's almost like there's dust behind it. If you can, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just very loud and not very, it's not very smooth. It feels like it needs oiling. That's just one thing I've noticed with this manual focus ring, but I hardly ever use the manual focus on this lens. And finally, this is probably my fault as well for leaving it out. Uh, quite a lot but some of the dust has actually got behind the lens element which is quite common with a lot of lenses that aren't weather sealed um, but it's not really affected photos so yeah but overall i've been very happy with this lens and if you can find it for a good price it is a very good way into bird photography if you are using the micro four thirds system and as always if you did enjoy this video be sure to hit that subscribe button i'll see everyone in my next video